Fill your thirst beside the river Wash the journey from your hands Feel the comfort flow inside you Come this far, you understand Hi! Welcome to Healing Outside the Box. I'm your host, Rosemary the Chance, a spiritual healer, teacher, and advisor. Hi, and I'm Carla Augustine, your <laughs> co-host for tonight, and a spiritual teacher. Tonight we are continuing our Life Explained series, which will give you food for thought information about spirituality based on the teachings of Hans Wilhelm from his Life Explained series. We will play one or two different DVDs and then have dialogue about it. We encourage you to call or email us or write to NHTV with your questions and we will answer them on the show or privately if you prefer. This is not a religious show and no matter what religion or belief you follow, the information we give you will only enhance your beliefs. We will not try to convince you of anything. This series is recorded, will be shown in your area on your local public service cable network. Please contact them for dates and times. Now, if you have a group that you think would be interested in what we have to offer, we are available to come to your group and teach from this series. We will give you our contact information at the end of the show. Please visit Rosemary's or Hans's website where you will find a wealth of information about our show and the series. Our shows are now available for you to watch on YouTube for free. Just go on YouTube and type in Healing Outside the Box to make your, your choices. We are constantly adding new shows, so keep checking back. We're also on Facebook under Healing Outside the Box. Please like our page for the latest information about our show, and we hope you enjoy the show. Okay, tonight is show number 235, and it's from the Life Explained series of Hans Wilhelm. And the first CD, DVD they're going to show is called No More Disappointments. So they'll play that in the control room and then we'll have dialogue about it. Hi, I'm Ancelin. Back in the 60s, there was a very popular book called The Handbook to Higher Consciousness by Ken Keeves. In this book, the author shared a very simple and effective tool to avoid disappointments and to soften any blows of fate. I personally have used this little tool many, many times and I can tell you it has made all the difference. In this video today, I want to share this technique with you. Have you ever wondered what is behind all our hurts, disappointments, sufferings and miseries? Like the sudden loss of a job, an illness, a divorce, a thousand other circumstances, whether they are big or small? These are all signs that something went widely different to what we had originally expected to happen. We did expect to have a job, to be healthy, to stay married and so on. Therefore, all our suffering comes from unfulfilled expectations. But life or reality has a unique way to teach us all kinds of lessons and they rarely include our expectations. Therefore, William Shakespeare reminded us expectation is the root of all headache. So let's look what happens when we have expectations. Here we are and here are our expectations of how life, our future and other people should treat us as well as expectations we have of ourselves. Let me suggest some typical examples. Uh, I expect to be happily married. I expect all my family members to love me and to respect me. I expect my children to take care of me. I expect to have a good job. I expect my boss to value my work and so on. The problem with expectations is that we are usually extremely attached to them. Why? Because our intellect cannot fathom what the future will bring us, it lives in the unsettling state of uncertainty. For anybody who is not strengthened in his faith and trust in the future, this uncertainty borders on the unbearable. So our ego, with our intellect, throws expectations into the future to grasp on, believing that we know what is best for us, but only the spirit of infinity knows what is truly good for us. Therefore, 
we have to learn to live with uncertainties and, if possible, even embrace them. Let us be very clear, God, or love, does not expect anything from us. Unconditional selfless love always means total freedom. God doesn't expect us to fulfill the Ten Commandments or the Sermon on the Mount or even the Golden Rule. He will not throw us into hell if we don't follow these suggestions. He gave us our free will and respects it. We always have a choice in any situation. And if we make a mistake, then we learn and will not do it again. And therefore, we are always evolving in this earth school of life. Love is the absence of all expectations, said Byron Katie. Think about that for a moment. Love is the absence of all expectations. That's powerful, isn't it? But to be clear here, if we have entered a prior agreement with another person or company, then we are morally bound to fulfill our obligations, like in a working relationship where the boss has the right to expect us to live up to the agreement that we have signed on to. In such a case, this is not an interference with our free will because we had originally agreed to it. Here is another example why it, it can be so damaging to us if we put expectations on others. Have you ever been in a situation where you repeatedly expected somebody to do something and yet they never did? Like they never picked up their clothes from the floor, even if you told them a thousand times? Or they never gave us the love and approval that we so desperately wanted and expected from them and reminded them over and over again, and so on? Katie suggests never to expect anything from a person that he or she is unable or unwilling to give. She says, if you expect reality to be different than it is, you might as well try to teach a cat to bark. You can try and try, and in the end, the cat will look up at you and say, meow. Expecting reality to be different than it is, is a lost battle. We always feel hurt if we have unfulfilled expectations, but there is a cure, a very simple and effective cure. Ken Keyes suggests changing or upgrading all our expectations to preferences. A preference takes a sting out of expectations and allows acceptance of what is actually happening. It is acceptance of reality. So instead of saying, I expect this or that to happen, I now say, I would prefer this or that to happen. And then we add, but I'm willing to accept whatever life shows me. Because life only gives us what is helpful on our journey home. This has a totally different emotional impact on us When we now say, I would prefer my son to pick up his clothes, or I would prefer if my parents would appreciate me, and so on. When we simply prefer things to happen, we are not as disappointed if they don't. We are now willing to readjust to the new reality and learn from it and simply move on. When we change all our expectations into preferences, we will notice a heavy load being taken off our shoulders, we will immediately sense the freedom we have given ourselves and others, because we are now willing, without any tears and fights, to entertain all the alternatives that life may have in store for us. With that attitude, our life suddenly becomes far more interesting, because we are now living in the now, the only time we have. And here, we welcome it with an open heart, instead of fighting life with resentments. The other great thing is that upgrading our expectations to preferences can also be done to any negative situation we find ourselves in right now. For instance, if we are very sick, have lost our job, a loved one, or are low on cash, we can use the same change of attitude right now. Naturally, we will continue to do everything that is humanly possible to change our situation. But in the meantime, we can say, I would prefer to be healthy or abundant or have a good relationship or whatever it is that pains us. But I will accept and even embrace whatever life shows me right now. If we find this too difficult for us to do in our present predicament, then let us ask a very deep question and find the answer in our heart. The question is, if my difficult circumstance would be the only way to return back home to God, would I accept it? That does not mean giving up. It means surrender. That means that I'm willing to open my heart, grow and be guided.
Think about of all the expectations you still have about your life, about tomorrow, about the people around you, and then upgrade these expectations to preferences. It may take a major load off your shoulders right now. Thank you for having been with me. Okay. It's a good one. Yeah, it, this is a, people are going to have trouble with this. Yeah, I know. It got me thinking, for sure. Yeah. I did find it so comforting when he said, um, it was such a powerful point, God doesn't expect anything yeah. from us. That is. That is really powerful. It's almost like you're saying, but he doesn't expect me to do it, but I want to do it anyway. I want right. to make him proud and happy. Right, right. You know, when, when you expect something, I think it's, you're, you're putting your... Setting, setting yourself up for disappointment. This is how I always felt when you have expectations about people. I expect them to act a certain way and they can't live up to that. They're going to be, it's going to be problems. Right. You know, and you're going to make them feel bad about themselves. So that was always my philosophy before I even heard, heard about this, you know. So, so I, I had a friend who always had expectations about me. I'm mm, like, ah, don't do that to me. I can't do it, right? I can't live up to that. I can't live up to it. Yeah. 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 Well, it just so. goes to show, too, I think... Um, you know, God's allowing free will. Oh, yeah. If he says, I expect you to do it, no matter what, then there's no free will. There you go. And then he also shows unconditional love. Yeah. So yeah. it would be the same thing with, with doing it to a person. Right. I have an expectation. I really think about this so even more yeah. and more and more. So, um, so, so you, you answered your own question. Yeah, there. I know. <laughs> It is comforting. This, all right, so the suggestion or tool is to upgrade expectations to preferences. Right. Um, and then this way we avoid disappointment. So instead of saying, I expect, just say, I prefer. And we won't feel disappointed or as disappointed. So few things about this. Is he saying it's less disappointing or not disappointing at all when we use prefer over expect? That's a good question. Um, I, I would guess that supposing it's your child and you want him to, um, he's practicing at a ball, for a ball game mm -hmm. and you want him to do well and you're expecting him to do and you say to him, I expect you to do really good now because you did all this practicing. You get yourself all hyped up and he gets all hyped up. In the meantime, he's getting very nervous because he's saying, what if I can't do that? Will she get mad at me? What will mm. happen? You know, so it happens and he doesn't do as well as he thought, probably because he was nervous about it. He didn't want to let you down. So that's that that would be the disappointment would be his too for letting That's you a good down point. yeah and you caused that for him because you had these expectations of him mm -hmm. and he's saying god she expects me to go what's going to happen if i don't do it am i going to really hurt her what's going to you know and that's not a good position to put mm -hmm. anybody in i'm using your child but you could do that with a friend right, with anything right. husband yeah. anything you know yeah no that's so true. that's yeah no. that's how that i look at it you know um so why or how does it work that we don't feel so disappointed. I mean, it's just a, a change in word. What do you think it does? Well, what I do now mostly is, you know, if there's something I want, uh, I will say, you know, to God when I talk to him, you, you know me, you know what I'd like to have, you know what I'd love to have, uh, you know what I'd want to have, but you know better than me. You know what's best for me. So, and I know that if it's your will that's done in me, it's always going to come out good, even if I don't see it at the time, mm -hmm. but it'll always come out good. And if it's a lesson I have to learn, well, that's a good thing, too, because then I've learned my lesson. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, I don't get disappointed like that anymore because I, I really you got to do it and you got to do it with your heart and soul saying whatever his will be done, whatever your will will be done, this situation, even though you know what I'd like to have. If it doesn't happen. All right. Well. You know, I feel a little bad it didn't happen, but I can understand. So you're saying too, take it an extra step, like believe it's God's will. Yeah. Of what, of however something turns out, that's how it turns Whatever out. Whatever I want something, mm -hmm. I always say, this is, I would love to have this, but it's your will. It's your decision, really. Yeah. 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 And that's more important because you know better than me. Mm -hmm. Down the road, in the long run, you know better. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Now, um, 
So trust me, I like this. I've tried. To, I'm starting to use it uh, in my life. I'm trying to like mm -hmm. be just even to be aware that I'm saying expect or having expectations and trying to say I prefer. Like I, pref I prefer it not rain when I leave the grocery store. Mm. I prefer, you know, so I, I'm trying to do it. So I think it's terrific. Um, but I also got thinking about it, like, is it such a bad thing to feel disappointment? I mean, can't that be kind of a learning tool to feel disappointment? Yeah, I don't think it's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. No, yeah. it's not a bad thing. If it's only you that's getting disappointed. But if you put it on someone else. Well, that's true. Yeah. I think that's not such a good thing. That's not such a good no, thing. Because then you're making yeah. them feel bad. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. For yourself, you say, oh, I get disappointed. Like if we have some plans and it's going to rain and I, oh, we can't do it. Yeah. I feel disappointed. That kind, it's, it's me. It's mine. It's my own. It doesn't mm -hmm. hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. But if I say to somebody else, you know, um, well, you didn't come and I expected you to come because, yeah. you know, whatever. And they're going, oh, geez, but I couldn't. This has happened. But they feel bad. You feel bad. And then you feel bad because you made them feel bad. Mm. <laughs> so right. that, yeah. that kind is not so good. To be very conscious yeah. of, but for your own things right. that happen. Oh, oh, oh! I've mm -hmm. yeah. We're bound to get disappointed, but let's keep it all in ourselves, right? And not put it on somebody else. That's right. the thing, and not hang on to it either. No. So if you're disappointed, just move on. That's yep. when emotions are not serving us. That's you know, right. That's when it becomes negative. If you're you just right. hang on to it, you just hang. We have to learn to let go of you all kinds of things go. all the time, right? Because that will get us. In trouble. That'll make it harder for us to learn and grow and get mm. back home. <laughs> um, so would we be motivated if we say prefer over expect, such as I prefer to lose weight or I prefer to quit smoking? You know, I just wondered if we didn't have an expectation of ourselves, would we be motivated to get things accomplished? I mean, we would be less apt to achieve. So does this expectation spark uh, motivation or determination? Okay. Well, there's a two ways to look at that thing. If we expect ourselves to lose the weight, say, yeah. we're going to lose 10 pounds this, or 3 pounds this week, and you get to the end of the week, you only lost one. So you expected to lose three, but you only lost one. So you're very disappointed. So what are you? You're disappointed with yourself. Okay. All right, and that's going to make you want to give up. Oh, mm. I can't do it. You can't even lose a, lose a lousy three pounds over the week. You, what, you know, what's wrong? You know how we do that to ourselves. Mm. What's wrong with you, you know? Right. So, yeah, you could do that to yourself. If you if you if in a situation like that, you know, you, you could get discouraged. Yeah, you could, yeah, you could just say, all right. You could get right. discouraged, yeah. You could talk to yourself and say, okay, you only lost one. Right. So you'll... Try harder, and maybe you'll make up for it, you know. Mm -hmm. But you will get upset with yourself just like you would get upset with somebody who disappointed you. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we, I think we have to learn to apply in all areas of our life to say, you know, I prefer to lose three pounds, but if I don't, I'm going to be okay, and I'll just keep trying. Mm, that's right. Like that, something right, like that, you know. something like that. To be kind to ourselves, because the way we treat ourselves is the way we treat others. Right. You know? Right. So. Yeah. All right, so, um, so by the same token, if we have a dream, you know, of being something, um, would it be any less disappointing? So say you had a dream of being a lawyer, and then you, you, you quit law school. And is it less disappointing if we don't have the expectation of the self to finish? Or, you know what I mean? Like, mm. do we not go after our dreams? I'm just, I guess I'm trying to find the value of, is there any value to disappointment? Value to disappointment? You know, I mean, does it, you know, um, you know, motivate us to, go after our dreams if if we well or so are we talking about a different drive well right you know um see i don't know I, I guess because at this stage of my life and it took me a long time to learn this because i went through all the disappointments and all the help yelling at myself and all the you know being mad at myself and mm -hmm. other people because they didn't do what i thought should be done or the way i thought it should be done 
And if I didn't finish, say, as a person I didn't finish, I'd say to myself, well, I guess I didn't really want it that bad. Mm -hmm. You know, start examining yourself. Well, why didn't you finish? What were you doing? And if you could be honest with yourself, you right. know, okay? So whether you have the expectation or you don't have the expectation, there's no reason to have a disappointment because you know what you did and True. what you didn't do. Right. Uh, okay, I didn't do this because I didn't really apply myself. So if I didn't really apply myself, do I really want to be a lawyer? Right. You know, right. let me stop and think about this. Maybe I don't. Yeah. See, mm. these are the things that help us to grow through life mm -hmm. and, and help us to get through life and help us to understand other people by questioning ourselves and our motives and did we really want to in the first place. Did we want to be a lawyer because, oh, okay, that's cast prestige and we make a lot of money? Or did we love it? Did we love what being a lawyer and what they do? That's a good question. Did we love to do it, do it because we love it or for other reasons? Right. So you have to ask yourself all that. So I think that when you do that, you won't get disappointed because you realize that this wasn't for you. Right. And I think what I'm hearing you say, too, is that um, when we're careful of the language you use, such as expect or prefer, um, it, it's, um, we're just being kinder. Mm. Kinder to ourselves, kinder to someone else, because it, it, instead of saying, I expect it, now I disappointed myself, end of story, versus, well, I, you know, I thought or I preferred to finish law school and I didn't. I wonder what that was about. I yeah. wonder why. I wonder. Maybe it more so encourages that self-reflection mm -hmm. to just be easier on ourselves with the wording. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and I want to hear you say prefer. Um, I would, uh, I can't only think about applying that to somebody, do you want a vanilla ice cream or chocolate? Mm -hmm. I prefer chocolate. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. But even I think prefer, when you say to someone else about a thing like that, you know, like, all right, if you're disciplining your child, I prefer that you didn't do this. Yeah, it would be easier instead of saying you disappoint me because then that really well, yeah, yeah, you don't want to see. right, right yeah, yeah that puts a thing on. But you say you know I really prefer it if you would not do this or do the that. So they, you're letting them know that um, you would be a lot happier if you if they listened to what you had said or what you had done. Mm -hmm. But yet you're not striking them down, so to speak. You're not you know making them feel bad. Well, maybe there's a time and place yeah. for using the word expect. I mean, it's not like we're going to get rid of it. Um, and, uh, you know, like a, I think he brought up the example, like a, a boss having an expectation of what the job is and for you to fulfill that of what the job is. And I think if you're trying to keep children safe, there's an expectation in this family, this is what we do. Um, because it's a kind of a, okay. a learning thing, but not to... Um, you know, not to, I don't know. I'm not sure. The, well, the boss I'm thing, sure. you know, that, that struck a chord for me because mm -hmm. that part is true. If you get hired and he tells you what the, the duties are, he mm -hmm. will expect you to do the duties. Right. It doesn't have to be even spoken. He's not going to say prefer. Yeah, he, he doesn't he, have to he, say prefer. Right. Because it isn't prefer in that case. Right. This is what the job entails. Right. This is what you should do. Mm -hmm. And he's going to think, you're going to say to him, I will, I will. So he's going to expect you to do it. Mm -hmm. That's a different way, I think. Because you've committed. Yeah. yeah. So that would be, yes, that would be, he would expect you to do it. So that would be an expectation. Because that's the job. That's that's what it is. Otherwise, he right. won't pay you for doing it. Right. But if you're if you're talking future, like I expect you, my child, to go to school and become a lawyer, so I can be really proud right. of you. Right. Right. That's different. Yeah. See, there's ways yeah. to. And so. I guess too, I um, you know, I'm just cutting hairs, but I guess too, it's just what do you what do you want, versus what do you expect? You know, what do I want? I want to go to law school. I. Um, I want you to be well behaved, you know, to a child. I want, you know, what do you, you know, there's a, there's a difference to, between, I would love you don't for always you to, have, expect you. isn't always the word right. in every situation. It's what do you want? What, what is, you know. Yeah. I hope you will behave, you know, when you do this. Or, yeah, that's, that's true. I, I would want, love yeah, it I if you. you be, I want you to behave. You, yeah. you need to behave. Yeah. You need to behave. You need to hold my hand when we're crossing the street. Right. You need to do this. Right. Okay. So it's not an expect or prefer. 
It's just what you need to yeah. do. Just like when people say, I need to do this for myself. Right. Everybody thinks I'm crazy, but I need to go back to school. Mm. I need to do this for That's myself. That's right. Right. That's so, a whole different yeah, thing. A whole different thing yeah. than saying, um, I expect to something. All right. I, yeah. I'm understanding a Expecting little bit. Expecting people yeah. to do a certain way, behave a certain way. Okay. Um, okay. So he goes on further to suggest, um, I will prefer to be, say, healthy, abundant in a relationship, but, but will accept and even embrace whatever life shows me right now. So my question was, do you practice this? Which I think I know the answer. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. Even yeah, when I pray. Good about that. You know mm -hmm. what I would love to have, mm -hmm. but if it's your will, mm -hmm. then I know it'll be done. That's if it's it. not, you'll show me another way or whatever you want. Because I found out I've mm. been very strong-willed all my life, practically, and uh, until I, you know, developed my spirituality, and then they didn't. It didn't turn out right because I wanted this. I wanted it, and I mm. wanted it, and I was going to have it. You know, you start thinking like that book, uh, The Secret. Yes. If you focus on it, and you're going to get it. You know, uh, I, that never, never sat mm -hmm. right with me. You know, mm -hmm. because how do you know that that's the right thing for you? It's what you desire, but is it the right thing for but you? But is it the right thing? And if you ask God, do the only the right thing, only the right things will happen to you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I look, and that's how I look at it now. I would love for this to happen, but is it good? Is it good for me? Is mm -hmm. it good for the other person or whatever the thing is? So I end up always saying, this is what I would love to see. The way I feel, this is what I would love, but right. I only want your will to be done. So. I, yeah, I'm doing this more and more in my life. It makes life so much easier. It does. So much easier. And so say someone, say I was looking forward to go out to dinner with somebody, and then they call and they said, I can't help it. I've got, I've got to cancel. Instead of being disappointed, instead I say, oh, what else did you want me to do today, God? What else did you want me to do tonight, mm -hmm. God? Am I supposed to stay in? Is that better for me that I stay in tonight? So just trying to look at it in a different way, like we're not alone in the universe, right. forging ahead all by ourselves, and only we can make things happen. Just what is the best thing? And, and, and vice versa. I've been exhausted and think, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can go out. But if you think I, I should, I will. Do you know what I mean? And, and sometimes the person will call then and say, sorry, I got to cancel on you. You know, and it's just, it's just, I don't know, you open yourself up to these miracles. And I know. It's just I, I can give you a little thought mm -hmm. example that happened to me just recently. A friend was in from out of town, and she wanted to go for pizza. And I wanted to go to this place, and I won't name it on the show, but I hadn't been there in years and years, and I had always loved it years and years ago. So I hadn't been there so long. Let's go here. So I was all excited and happy and ex had all these expectations. Oh, it's going to be great. And we got there, and we ordered and hated it, and I hated it. <laughs> it had changed owners, and oh, okay. it, it just was not the same. the same, the pizza that I loved. And I felt really bad, but I said, okay, God. I said, you know, I said, now I know. If I hadn't gone, I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have known. So now I know. So I'm okay. Right. Well, what happened uh, the next the next night? The night after, I got a call from another friend. Hey, do you want to go pizza for pizza to another place, which I like. So thank you, God. You know, yeah. you're it's making up for me. I mean, that's right. a silly little thing, but all these little things add no, up but to. You, but you avoid disappointment yeah. if you trust right. that things are for in your favor. If mm -hmm. you trust that God is working for you. Right. If you trust that. He, I always want, I've been wanting to go there for so long, and I finally got the opportunity to go and to find out that it wasn't what I thought it would be, mm. and that's okay. You know, I was disappointed, but I said, that's, that's all right, because mm -hmm. I know now, you mm -hmm. know. So I, I just pluffed it off. But there, right. I got another invitation. Yeah. So I thought, oh, isn't that great? Yeah. And it's just, it's, you add up all these little things, and they add up to a lot of big, a big things. A lot of things, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, let's see. Oh, so, so it was an interesting question he posed. Um, if my difficult circumstances would be the only way to return back to God, would I accept it? So if this, whatever's going on in my life right now, if it's difficult, it's a great way to look at it, really. I'm going to have to start doing this one, too. But would I accept it? I mean, how would you answer that? If my difficult circumstances would be the only way 
to return back home to God, would I accept it? So I think basically he's saying what we just got finished saying when I think about it is just um, accepting, you know, that that God's got your back kind of thing. Yeah, because difficult circumstances are only difficult for you when you wanted something else, you know, mm -hmm. and you depended on something else. Um, instead of looking at it as a learning thing, if it's if it was difficult, it was difficult for you to learn, or if it was a lesson that God knew that you needed to learn, because if you didn't, you wouldn't become the perfect being that you are to be mm -hmm. when you get back home. So whenever any difficulties come into my life or something happens, I say thank you. Like, like sometimes I'll be grumpy or I'll, I'll say something to somebody that wasn't very nice, you know, and I didn't think too much about it because I thought that was my mood. And then so, that another person will say the same thing back to me in a different circumstance. Yeah. And I used to just get aggravated, but now I say, oh, okay. You wanted me to see how it feels. You wanted me to know how I was acting. You showed me myself. I don't like what I see, so I have mm. to stop doing that. I have to mm -hmm. correct it in myself so it won't happen again to me. I mean, and I'm getting him quicker and quicker now because I am open to open learning. To open to, he knows I want to get back home, you know. Right. He knows I want to get rid of this junk because it's only holding me down. And it's not a lasting happiness. You know, anything you get here is not a lasting happiness. Mm -hmm. Only what you've learned and all the love that you've shown and that you felt and how you helped and all those kinds of things is what you take with you. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm learning like everyone else, right, like you know. I started else. out, you know, wanting all these things and wanting to have and all that and wanting to be a certain way and people to be a certain way. And then when I finally just gave up and said, you know, you can't do it that way. No. What do you want? Right. I never stopped to ask that because so far what I want hasn't been working out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, okay, I'm ready. And sometimes we have to take it that far to say, mm -hmm. ugh. It's not working out. And then some people will just keep pushing forward anyway. But I'm here to tell you, it's much better if you just stop and say, okay, I got the message. I've got the message, now, yeah. what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. You know what Surrender. I would like. Show me Surrender. the other way. Show me something else if it's not right. Surrender I'll walk release. this way, but tell me if I should turn, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what I've took me a long time right. to figure out. But. It's no, the only way. Surrendering is, though. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. I and mean, if you're, thy will be done. If you're surrendering right. to that, that's a very difficult thing to let go I know. of what it is that you actually I know. want. It's or, like being or I think in is good for you. Being in love with your husband or your wife, and all of a sudden they decide they don't want to be with you anymore. Mm -hmm. And you have to let them go. You know that saying mm -hmm. if you love something, let it go. If it comes back, yeah. And it's true with everything in life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it hurts. Sometimes it hurts. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. But in the long run, if you just if you just can adopt that right now, I could save you so much trouble in life if you just adopt that policy of asking mm -hmm. him, only your will be done in me and in my life. Mm -hmm. I say it every day, and I thank every day for all the things I've learned. It it It's just so much more peaceful that way. Right. You know, it, and, and you, you don't have to worry if you did the right thing or the wrong thing because you know you did what God you asked. Mm -hmm. And you filed, if you didn't get an answer right away, you filed what you thought you should do until you get an answer and you may have to take another turn. Well, that's okay because you were, you were open to know that, okay, now you have to turn this way. You have to do it that way. Right. So, you know, you just can't stay there and go, okay, I'm not going to move. You tell me what to do. You can't do that. Right. You have to try it. And yeah. see, but be open to what comes along. And after a while, you'll get used to those signs, those yes. little signs that come to you from whatever, right. you know? Right. And you get them all the time. And it's heartwarming yeah. when it happens and when you recognize it, that when you think of, you know, God is just communicating with you, mm -hmm. you know, and is communicating directly to you. Right. You know, it's really quite remarkable it is. and amazing when you open up to that. Makes you feel, and, and if yeah. you don't, it's just stubbornness. You know. You know, I well, it's hard to trust. Yeah, yeah, and it's hard to trust. Trust what you can't see. Yeah. You know, that's the problem. That's, that's why Christ thing. said, blessed are those who can't see, but yet they yeah. believe. Right. 
and it's not easy to do, <clears throat> mm -mm. but you might as well get started because mm -hmm. it's the only way back. Right. You know? <laughs> <I> know. <laughs> it really is. Just, right. just, just let it go. Right. You know, right, that's all I can just go. let it go. Let it go. So. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Um, so we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah, we'll all go right. on to the next one. Okay. So in the control room, we'll put the next one on. And that is... Art and Spirituality. Yes. Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. As a mystic and artist, I will share a few personal thoughts on art and its relationship to spirituality. My hope is to inspire us to look at art a little differently and to use our artistic talents with greater focus. Is there anything that can transform our senses faster than art can? Just a few notes. And we are drawn into another mood, another world, another reality. Or just a few paragraphs of a good book make us forget our daily worries. And paintings can have the same effect. It is no wonder that most popular visual art are images of beauty, loveliness, skies, flowers and so on. These are works that we feel drawn to because they are mostly hopeful, if not to say uplifting. It is a powerful antidote to all the bitterness, the sadness and the hopelessness that many feel in their daily lives. Therefore, more than ever, people are flocking to museums in ever-larging numbers to nourish their soul and be embraced by art. Beautiful art has always been an effective medicine to bring us back into harmony. For celebrated artists like Matisse, this was their main focus. He hoped that his art of balance and purity would have an appeasing influence, like a mental soother, something like a good armchair in which to rest from physical fatigue. And Pablo Picasso said it more precisely, art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. Sometimes we are attracted to art because it gives us what we feel is missing in our own life. For instance, if we feel hectic, we may want to listen to serene music or look at images of calmness and tranquility. Art brings us back to our inner strength and balance that we have temporarily lost touch with. But art can also help us to see and appreciate the world anew, to look again at a sunset to appreciate the movement of light, to listen anew to the sounds of nature, to discover the exotic and the strange and the unexpected. It broadens our horizon as it draws us into details of life and shows us the richness of creation in paintings, music, literature, dance, architecture and many, many other artistic ways of expression. For some, art is also a means to make us feel less lonely. It can reconnect us with divinity, something larger than ourselves. It can reawaken our compassion for others and for ourselves. As Vincent van Gogh said, art is to console those who are broken by life. The actual artistic creative process varies from artist to artist. But let us reflect on the spiritual aspect of the artist's creativity. We know that the universe is nothing but a constant sending and receiving of energy vibrations or frequencies. In other words, we humans are also nothing but vibrational entities that constantly send out our individual vibrations through our thoughts, words and actions. This applies even more so to any artist. She does this very consciously as she creates meaning projects, a piece of art into the world. May it be a piece of music, a painting, a dance or anything else. The question is, from which part of her being is she creating? What is the source of her creativity and inspiration? Is it from her own true essence, which some call our higher self, which is love, harmony and joy, the divine inner wellspring of inspiration? If so, her art will reflect and vibrate that beauty in many ways into the world. Mozart is a typical example here, who apparently channeled his divine music without ever making a single mistake or correction as he wrote down his compositions. 
In her creative process, the artist beholds and feels that beauty, that harmony, that balance, and then seeks to duplicate it in her own way via her individual expression. Any creative act is a recombination of existing bits of universal intelligence, be they be in the form of words, notes, rhythms, colors, shapes, and so on. Possible combinations are infinite, and so is creation. As she is expressing and sending these aspects out of her in her art, they may then stimulate the same noble qualities in those who come into contact with her work. But other artists prefer not to work with this particular source of inspiration. These artists draw the source of their inspiration from their subconscious, not their higher self, but their personality, their ego, their unquestioned and often troubled mind. They are comfortable to connect more easily with their own personal unresolved issues or their anxieties or struggles which the world around them reflects back to them. As we know, the outer world is always a reflection, like a mirror, of what goes on within us. I have explained that in greater detail in my video The Law of Projection. This form of artistic expression is a powerful tool for self-discovery. It is basically art therapy where we can learn what it is that we have not yet overcome, loved, forgiven, or questioned and resolved. It's more like an honest diary entry that tells us what goes on within us in our life. Some artists are very attached to their issues and feel that they have to share their inner hardship and struggles with everyone else. A classic example is the artist Louise Bourgeois, who discovered as a young child that her father had an affair with her governess. She felt so betrayed that she kept expressing her anger in her work for the rest of her long creative life. The motivation for the work is a negative reaction against her. Uh, it shows that it is really the anger that makes me work. She turned me into a wild beast, right? In contrast, the artist Niki de saint Fal took a very different route. Initially, she also expressed her difficult childhood in very violent and aggressive art, which included shootings and destruction. But she eventually transcended her personal issues and began to populate the world with her famous delightful nanas and colorful creatures that enchant millions every day. Isn't it interesting that most famous art that has endured and attracted generations after generations is not an expression of unresolved personal issues of the artists? I already mentioned Mozart. Did he ever convey in his compositions the misery and disappointments he was going through as he grew older? Did Van Gogh complain in his vibrant paintings that nobody wanted to buy them? Certainly not. Did grumpy Beethoven lamented in his symphonies that he was stone deaf? The problem with all our unresolved emotional issues is that we are constantly sending these vibrations into the world. And there can be attractive entry ports for negative astral entities who resonate with these issues and can manipulate and even dominate the creative process of an artist to gain energy influence and control. We see their malicious expression in many examples of violent and destructive art like some video games and extreme musical expressions that enforces harmful emotions and actions in the musicians and the audience. For an artist it is usually easy to determine from which level we are working by the way we feel. If we open to our higher self and let the divine creative energy and inspirations flow through us, we usually feel more invigorated, energized during and after our creative process, in spite of all the temporary artistic challenges that we may encounter. The result is often that we can't wait to return to the studio and make more art. But when we only work from our ego and our own unresolved issues and unquestioned mind, the artist very often feels tired, drained, depleted and mentally exhausted. In some cases, it can even cause depressions or burnout. And if a cup of coffee doesn't help, some artists may even reach for alcohol or drugs to regain their depleted energy. And this is exactly what these guys here want us to do. Sadly, the list of artists whose inner struggle caused their own early death is long. 
It always comes back to the law of cause and effect. Absolutely anything that we send out and is not love intended or love based will always have karmic consequences for the sender to wake us up. Yes, it also includes the art that we produce. Anything that is unloving or from our ego, like from these lower levels, will inadvertently come back to us as karma until we question it and love it. So much of today's art is shock value for an easily bored art community with the fragile egos and bloated vanity of collectors. I'm always thinking of the poignant words by the writer Tom Wolfe. Contemporary art would be considered a ludicrous practical joke if otherwise bright people hadn't elevated it to a higher plane, upon which a lot of money changes hands. Can we now see that the spiritual perspective of art differs vastly from the purely intellectual interpretation of art? It is my understanding that as we, as a society, advance spiritually, our art will serve exclusively for the glorification of the creator and creation in as much as the human expression is able to do it. It is a celebration of the all-unity, a symphony of harmony, balance and beauty. Or as the painter, poet and printmaker William Blake wrote some 200 years ago, the artist's business is to transcend earth things and reveal the glories beyond. If the soul of the observer is lifted to such high vibration as to be closer to his own divine state and closer to God, then the work of art has achieved its aim. A typical example is music. It is a vehicle to loosen up the connection between the external frame and the body of the soul. This results in a feeling of floating, freeing oneself of material bonds. Art can remind us that we are eternal and divine light beings beyond space and time. Wow, this is a great one, wasn't it? It it's is. really beautiful. It really is yeah. a great one. And it, it tells you so much mm -hmm. um, about what's going on inside a person. Mm. From what he puts out on paper, pen, right. or in right. his other kinds of work. Yeah. Yeah. It really yeah. does. Do they have command of their emotions or is that the point? I mean, I thought he made, you know, there's two kinds of artists. It's an interesting point. So there's two kinds of artists, those that actually are connected to the divine. Mm -hmm. And then that's what they paint or write or whatever. And then those that, I thought it was funny, said they're just giving off art therapy. So they're just working out uh, their working issues, out the, yeah. their personal issues with their art. Right. You Some know, come from ego. Some come, right, right. And if this dark art, the dark spirits are we're gonna are gonna be attracted to it, and make you want you to do more, and they're gonna encourage you to do more. Of that right, right. You've seen some people who've committed crimes and everything. Some of their art, and they, some of them have are artists mm -hmm. of some sorts. Their art is so dark and awful, mm -hmm. you know. But that's what's going on inside of them. Right, right. Whether it's from them or from other spirit, you know, dark spirits or whatever. Yeah, you know, we're God is creative because of course he created all of us but we're all creative mm -hmm. every single person is creative there's no one left out none of you are left out of that you're all creative yes. in some way shape or mm -hmm. form okay so mm -hmm. and it's if we do what, what is creative in us that makes us the happiest right you know whether it's drawing pictures or building something or the dancing or the singing or whatever right but staying connected to the divine. Yeah, that's what we said, should do. You know, the higher, um, the higher self, which mm -hmm. connects us to the divine. So staying connected to our higher self, which in turn connects us to the, the divine, mm -hmm. then we're going to produce something beautiful um, versus, uh, versus our unresolved issues or negativity. Right. Yeah, I mean, it was really... And I, and I have to admit, you know, it got me thinking. I thought, you know, no wonder some art makes me uncomfortable when the difference between just not liking it but not that I, you don't have to like somebody you could not like monet or something right now you cannot like it but uncomfortable like some things just music books are i'm just like funny feeling you know and so i wonder if i'm picking up on the source 
Me too. The negative source. There's not a lot of art that I like. I, I have to Interesting. say. Interesting. Yeah, I've looked at all different kinds, and there's what I, you know, gravitate towards. I think Dal Dolly. I like him because it's different. Mm. And it's see, I like magic, and as a kid. I used to draw cartoons all the time. Oh, wow. Because I liked the magicalness of the cartoons, of the way they moved and the way they did things mm -hmm. and how they survived, and flowers and nature and all that. And that's all that I loved. Anything that had to do with that, you know? So that's what I was attracted to, anything magical. So most of the artists, you know, I like um, Van Gogh because I, I paint and all that. And mm. my teacher told me... <laughs> I start out drawing something little, and all get wild, you know. So he says, "You're Van Gogh," and I, and I looked at him, <laughs> the art, and I said, "Oh, yeah, I can see what he means, you know. Mm. Little sunflowers. No, I have big white sunflowers, you know. But it helps to get it out of us. Mm. We should all do that. Whatever mm. we enjoy, we should all do, you know. Really, whatever that is that you're yeah. creating, yeah, that creative piece, yeah. The, the actors and actresses. Mm. That's how they do it. Mm -hmm. That's their art." That's what they love. If they do it because they love it, or mm -hmm. if they do it because they want fame and notoriety and money, mm -hmm. uh, it's a whole different thing. You could learn to act. Mm -hmm. But the great ones are the ones that did it because they love it. Because they love heart. it. So yeah. they're connected. And the singers. Mm. There's not music today. Mm. The new music out, that's not music. That's talking. Mm -hmm. that's, I call it talking with music playing in the background. <laughs> well, is it passion? I mean, you know, is, or is it just is it business? You yeah. know, you can tell. I've noticed even with like some um, authors that they, they just, their the first book is good, maybe even their second book is good, and then 15 books later, it's like you just know it's a money machine and they're just, and right. there's nothing wrong with making money, but it's just there's, they're lacking something. They're just pumping books out That's right. every year to make money, and it, it feels it. It's like their, their work is missing something. You're absolutely right. That's a good. That's a good uh, thing to bring mm. up because it's true about our about authors. It's that same thing. Yeah. And a lot of them are so very detailed. Give you every little detail, which is so boring. It's like me listening to small talk with people. Oh, I can't handle yeah. it. So I find myself skipping through the book. But they do it to fill a book. Well, that's the thing, and I'm noticing that a lot lately with um, some books I'm reading. As my husband will say, "Is it any good?" I'm like, "It's good. It's 100 pages too long." Yeah. I said, "I'm always saying that. It's right. really good. Right. But why does it have to be a 400 page right. detective novel? I exactly. mean, it's just 300 would have been more than enough." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but it, all kinds of art is good for the soul, and we're all artists. Every single person is an artist of some kind. Mm. So we should do what we love. Right. What if we do can't do it for a living, it? which I've never been able to do, but just do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. Just do it for yourself. Yeah. But I like to write. I've never there been able go. to do it for a living, but I just I love to write. Right. It feels very, very creative to me. That's right. Mm. We can't do it for a living because. There again, we have to meet up, meet up with other people's expectations, expectations see, right, right. and that, that hurts a lot of us, you know. But if we can find the time to do it for ourselves, and boy, it's a wonderful gift to be able to do it for a living, mm -hmm. you know, it really is. Right. Even people that come and paint houses, there's an art to painting a house, oh, sure. right? You oh, know, sure. all the different things that people do, building a car, yes. a mechanic that puts something together, that's art. It's all art, mm -hmm. and they don't think it is, but right. it is. But it is. You know, it's I mean, if we if we're all um, just artists who put paint to canvas, we wouldn't have anything done in this world. <laughs> Nobody know. would do anything else. So it's all just as good. It depends on how you do it. Right. What you put into it. Right. If you put love into it, it's going to show. Yeah. If you put That's anger it. into it, it's going to show. It's going to show. Mm -hmm. It's going to show, and mm -hmm. and when the anger part, you're going to be like she showed. They're going to be the the lower spirits are going to be attracted to you and want you to do more of that because they just love that kind of stuff, you know. Mm. Because right now they're very lost. All the so negativity, that's what that happens. Yeah. yeah, all that negativity, yeah. they're lost in it. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what did he mean when he said, "quote Any creative act is a recombination." of existing bits of universal intelligence. I didn't understand that. Can you it's explain a it? Combination. Okay. I had read when I was reading, you know, how to read spiritual books mm -hmm. that we don't do anything new here. Mm. We haven't created anything new. Mm -hmm. Everything that we create has been done in heaven. 
So it's there. We just tap into it again. Oh, okay. okay. So the beautiful paintings are yeah. there. We think that we, you know, We're created the originator. a book about, like, you, you'll see, like, the book um, from um, Astral City. He wrote a wonderful book, but it wasn't his book. Spirit, the spirit who contacted him, told him what happened mm -hmm. to him, and he put it in a book form. And it, it's, I mean, it's wonderful. And all those things that are true stories make for wonderful reading. Right. If they don't add extra stuff into it, just tell it like it is, you know? Right. So we think that, you know, we have great egos in this planet, all of us. We just have these great big egos. But we never created anything new. As above, so below. Mm -hmm. Everything, all, all those bits of what you said here, existing bits of universal intelligence, it's all out there. It's been done. Mm -hmm. We just do it here. You know, mm -hmm. we have houses here. There's houses there, you know. Mm. It's, you know, trees yeah. and everything. It's all there. Everything is the same. Furniture, furniture. Paintings, mm -hmm. paintings. Nothing new. We're just, we're just grabbing all. It's what we gravitate to. I mean, even in heaven, we're not all artists. We're not all builders. We're not all this. We're not all that. We do what we, we love. All the fingers are different, mm -hmm. but they're all in the hand. It's all the same, you know. So that's what that means. Oh, it's hard to conceptualize. Yeah. yeah. It is, mm -hmm. but that's how it is. I, I've read that. There's nothing new that you nothing have created that's sun. not in, yeah. been done in heaven. Right, that hasn't been done already. We're just remembering. Mm. And the ones who do it best are the ones who remember the best. Mm -hmm. And that's good because that means they're closer to their spirituality, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And that lovely mm, thought. That yeah. is, really. Um, so how are we doing for time? Are we going to swim more? Three minutes? Okay. Okay, uh, so, so well, quick we, question. We talked about... You know, we've talked about karma before. Whatever we send out that's not love-based or intended will come back as karma. And I guess I didn't think about it applying to absolutely every area of our life, even our work. So he had said, so if an artist uses his talents to put negativity into the world, he's accumulating karma? Mm -hmm. See, yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah, because he's, he's, he's putting something out there that's going to influence people negatively. You know, right. like, all right, let's take this um, heavy metal rock, is it? Right. All right. Now, these guys are, are called artists, but the music they put out, it just upsets the whole vibration of the systems of the people that listen to it. Mm -hmm. it it's not soothing, melodic, mm -hmm. that puts you in a mood of love and peace. It's angry. Yeah, it agitates. That music is, comes from the artist's anger, mm -hmm. and he's putting that anger out there for people to hear. And because it's a fad... And young people love fads. They think, oh, it's so great. But they really stop to think about it, which I don't think they do much now because they're all caught up in that kind of thing. They have to realize that that is not good for their vibration. That's not mm -hmm. good for their souls. There's no heavy metal mm -hmm. music in heaven. You know? yeah. And, oh, well, I'm going to be bored because it's going to be so... Pe no, you're not going to be bored. There's going to be plenty to do, and it's going to always going to be peaceful and loving. Mm. But these people are contributing to that negative All the time. Mm -hmm. vibration. Mm -hmm. Even, I mean, there's artwork that's pretty filthy mm -hmm. that they call art. Right. You know? Right, right, right. Really filthy. Right. And it turns people on right. because it appeals to our low side. Low self, yeah. Right. And those things now, here's, you know, it's one thing to feel that way. It's another thing to make other people feel that way. Yeah. It's even a bigger sin. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that, you know, that, that answers the question. Yes, Our talents sure. can put negativity into the world. Yeah. All right. Well, we have to give All our right. contact information. Okay. This went fast. This sure did. We'll say good night. So you can uh, check out my website, CarlaAugustin.com. I would love that. And uh, please watch my show on YouTube. Uh, it's called Spiritual Invitation. You just type my name into the search on YouTube, and all the shows will come up. And to reach me from Healing Outside the Box Info, your phone number is 203-627-7966. My email is whitebuffalo8 at comcast.net. And my website, www.rosemarylechance.com, where all the shows are listed. And the most important website is where we get our spiritual information, www.gabrielle-publishing-house.com. There's tons of books and things for you to read and see there. Please go on that website. Okay, everyone, we'll say goodnight right. for now. And we'll see you next time. 
Take care. Be safe. We love you. Yeah. Good night. <coughs> Good night. Feel your thirst beside the river. All right. It's so good. It's fast. Wash the journey from your hands. Feel the comfort flow inside you. Come this far, you understand.